my day family how are you doing today for those of you that are new to my channel my name is Mayday and I'm a licensed counselor with a YouTube channel and like this video for the YouTube algorithm as well so let's go ahead and get started well hi everyone how are you guys doing today so I'm really glad to be back with another video so I'm gonna be re reviewing um, or not reviewing but doing a reaction on Abba and Rich's video um, that they did a reaction on a reaction video uh, where I guess Kim Kardashian or the Kardashians made some comments about how to be successful, how to get rich, whatever the case may be. So let's dive right in. Kim Kardashian made some comments and they got more viral and people felt some type of way. My advice for women in business is you just have to do what you're actually passionate about because if you don't have passion in it, it's not easy regardless of how it looks. How about Courtney's going to say some shit like uh, right before Pairs of a successful sister, uh, an NBA player, and get a baby by Get a baby by Oh my god, they are so rude. <laughs> um, that's what she should have said because, you know, we all know what happened. Baby, yeah, they're stupid rich, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I like how all these sisters act like they did some shit. And I'm like, no, nope, she just came out the right. <laughs> some of y'all did none of the work. Like when people see things with instant record. Yeah, they didn't do any work. Literally, they just are super lucky. They were born into favorable circumstances. And that mom of theirs, I know that it's everyone knows the the momager very cunning. And when you already have a good amount of money, it's it becomes easier to fund your next source of income, right? So you, you just have to figure out what other rich people are doing, and you don't even have to worry about being able to do, actually do it because you already have. Um, a good amount of money there where you can get it started and make even more money. So I don't really know. I don't like what advice could they possibly have to get? <laughs> because of social media that they think it just comes easy to people. It doesn't, especially if you want something long term. I have the best advice for women in business. Get your fucking ass up and work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. You That's have to so true. you have to surround yourself. But but why is that only for women in business? that that sh in my opinion that's especially for men i think because there's a lot of conversations different topics out there um for example today men and men are are getting more and more frustrated with the fact that well women aren't wanting to maybe commit or be in serious relationships as much as they used to in the past. Well, one of the biggest challenges is that men aren't able to provide in the same way that they were able to provide in the past. And so it's like men are wanting women to commit without being proper providers. And it doesn't work that way. And that's what we're starting to see is that well, it's a two-way street. Just because, historically speaking, women were kind of going with the role um, doesn't mean that um, they weren't expecting uh, anything in, in return. They weren't expecting a fair exchange. So I think that's just an example, but I, I don't know why she said women and targeted women specifically. That's silly. Um, but I do agree with her on me as a business owner, it's harder to hire. I literally, when I first started, I thought the hardest part was deciding when to hire. That's not the hardest part. <laughs> it's like, I want to hire. The hardest part is finding an, a, someone that's willing to put in the work and willing to actually work for their income. And so I do agree with her where I think it's, it's, in today's society and generation, it's, it is getting harder and harder to find people that are willing to put in the work. And I think social media has a lot to do with that. But I also think it is hypocritical for her to say that because her whole show, it went, it lasted who knows how many seasons, doesn't really 
propagate hard work. <laughs> Their whole show is based on the way that she looks and it's based on things that don't matter. Like, oh, I got in an argument with my sister and this is what we were talking about and blah, blah, blah. It doesn't really, their whole show doesn't make that um, a central stone or it doesn't even make it a topic, in my opinion, you know? Um, so for her to now be preaching all these things when she hasn't contributed at all to it and she could have contributed more to that given her status and the amount of money that she had is a little ridiculous to me. People that want to work have a good work environment where everyone loves what they do because you have one life. No toxic work environments and show up and do the work. If you're the smartest person in that room, gotta go to another room like you don't know, i want yeah. to be around really successful people because that's when it's oh my god please it is she could literally walk in any room and most people will be smarter than her it is not going to be that difficult <laughs> for her to find a room where she fits in like in this room for example <laughs> i'm sorry okay let's keep going be successful all these like fucking suck up quotes um okay so a lot of people heard these comments and got upset. There was a whole bunch of people online and some type of way about her comments. I'll just let you go ahead. Okay, first and foremost, I believe that she's right. That's not what she said. It's who said it. Okay. And that's what got people pissed off. It's not so much that she people, yeah, you have to work. It's a it's a it's it's, it's a hard job. I was speaking to someone. This was like, I think I want to do this YouTube thing. I only need this you know one, this influencer thing. I'm like, okay, what do you want to do? But well, I don't know for what you think, what you want to talk about. You have to find your niche. Well, I don't know. The more I was speaking to the person, the more I realized, okay, you just don't want to, you just want the fame and the attention. You don't want to do the work. You want that shit to come easy to you. And that's it. You got some people, I was talking to another person, telling me that one of his partners was buying views. Buying views. You just want what the, it looks like. Yeah, there's some people that really do not want to work for it. They really want the instant gratification. Now, the problem is this. What she said was not the problem. Is who said it. And coming from King K, you know what I mean? Yeah, you have to do is what? Be at the right place at the right time. You, you forget that as well, that aspect, because there's people that are working hard. Yeah, not just be at the right place at the right time, but also sleep with the right person at the right time, right? <laughs> That's inappropriate. I digress. There are some people that do work hard and they will never get to your level. Some people, get a succession of good luck and work and it's still gonna get it and you got good luck and it happens so let's not let's not forget the fact that luck and being there at the right time and capitalizing on that also isn't is the factor it's not just the hard work girl please you were already in the position where you start your career where you had the luck to be at the position that you're at you have the dad that you you have the dad that you had that had a whole lot of money and you were able to chill with Paris Hilton that was not work. That was your daddy. Come on. Because you see everything on social media and you think, oh, it's just a lifestyle or, oh, it's like real quick and easy and you can just post something and it's not easy. When you do product shots, when you do post things that are work-related posts, it's still a job and it's still really hard and success is never easy. I think I want to see it in like a fancy photo. I just imagine on the left side, Pete Davidson too. <laughs> I bang that. <laughs> Where are you at, Pete? In your wife's face. That's fine. Okay. You put in the work, you will see results. Okay, it's not that. Look okay, that you know, that last one makes me cringe so hard. Okay, <laughs> but, but we'll get to that in a bit. Let's, let's just go from the top. So, this is one of the interesting things about success in life is folks take their trajectory and then they'll say, this is what it is. Mm -hmm. and this is the truth, right? Mm -hmm. People will say, I met my wife and she was a virgin and we've been together 40 years. That's the truth. You need a virgin. And they go, well, everybody's going to think that their way of doing things is the right way. And it lacks a lot of respect. Because if you aren't honest about all the things that contribute to where you got to where you are, you can't really be honest about your trajectory. When I hear her talk about this stuff, I find it a little strange because, like Fritz said, it's not like you just did a rags to riches story. Ooh, you come from one of the most famous lawyer families in the world. Ain't that the man who defended OJ? It was part of the you come from like living in Beverly Hills to have a connection. But like, here's one thing that folks don't admit. When you come out of university, the most important part is not even the degree, it's the connection that you make. 
right? Because from that, you're able to garner more opportunities. So if your parents are boosters at the university, you're far more likely to get in the university and stay inside because they don't need so much money. Those kind of I do agree with Abba on that. I think nowadays, especially nowadays, when you, if you're going to go to university, it's more worth it if you really know what you want to specialize in. Otherwise, there's plenty of ways to make money, right? And apart from that, though, to, to co-sign on what Abba just said, it, it isn't the degree you have. It isn't even necessarily the school you went to. It's the people that you know, the connections that you have, or the connections that you're able to build after the fact. I used to work in corporate for a lot of years, and I can tell you, I mean, most of the people I ran in, into, just as a regular employee, most of the people that were managers, if not all of them, were total total idiots, right? Like they, they just, they, they, half the time, more than half the time, they know what the heck they were talking about. But yet here they are sitting in leadership positions. So how does that happen? Well, you know, it's who you know, right? It's um, how well can you play the game? Um, it's how well can you fit into that culture, right? So it's a lot of these different things that really don't have anything to do with how hard you work or how much you know, like knowledge-wise. Um, and that's a sad thing, right? But I think it becomes how much, how much you know knowledge-wise and how hard you work becomes more useful to you if you use it for yourself as opposed to, say, working for someone else or whatever the case may be. Eh. I mean, but it just depends. Like, if you like the culture, then fine, that's okay. So there's all these different variables that go into that. Um, so yeah, I would have to say that I do agree with Ava on this particular point. And help you out throughout life. When you want to apply for a job, you think your resume is the most important thing? Of course not. Who you know at the company is going to be the biggest determining factor. That's not true. Your resume is super important. It's actually, it is one of, it, it's one of, if not the most important thing, especially if you don't have any connections, because you have to think about it like fishing, right? The resume it's what is what gives you the opportunity to even have that first phone call or that interview. So don't listen, don't listen to him when he says that. I think what he's just trying to point out or emphasize is that who you know carries more weight. So if you know the right people, you will be able to go a lot further than with just a resume, if that if that makes sense. But I, I just, I don't think I want, especially younger people getting confused or misinterpreting the how important a resume actually is if you do find yourself in a position where you're trying to apply, you're needing an eight to five or whatever the case may be, that is probably the most important part because that's what's going to get you an opportunity uh, in order for you to be able to get your foot in the door. I know people who are shit for brains and bad residents. They know the right people they can get into anywhere. That's a fact of life. There are certain things that you will never have access to that same has. And so here's another weird thing. Wow, they're working harder than literally everybody you know. But if you know anything, so this is correct. I, I I agree with this point. I mean, even when you go to school and you have a specialization, what they might not tell you is that that's oftentimes not enough. You probably also want to be business minded, especially the higher you climb within the educational realm. So if you're someone that's gotten the bachelor's, gotten the master's, gotten the PhD or the doctorate. Um, I mean, it can be enough depending on what your aspirations and goals are. If you're just okay with that and making just a comfortable living, then that's fine. But if your aspirations and goals are to, you know, continue to, to rack in the change and or money and, and, and grow, uh, you'll have to have more. You'll have to have more in your repertoire. So most of the time, it comes down to just being able to be business-minded and diversify your 
train of thought in order to be able to better diversify your portfolio and income streams. I know you hear that a lot, but it is true. It's not about working hard, it's about working smart. You can save as much money as you want. I think it's about both. I think working hard and smart. Unless you're born into money, there's a, there's a certain amount of work that you're going to have to put in to get started, for sure. If you know the right investment strategies, you're going to make more than anybody who learns how to save, put the money in the savings account. The savings account's got a point. Don't use a savings account, please. It's a complete waste of time. You will make no money keeping your money in a savings account. Now, save up your money so that you can then invest it, but not... Don't save it just for it to be in there thinking you're going to make any money off of that because you're not. <laughs> or, or interest rate. You, you get an extra 15 bucks a year. Okay. <laughs> That's yeah. actually high. I need to know what bank he uses. <laughs> 15 bucks a year. Person who has a good investment strategy understands crypto, who understands stocks, who understands dividends, all this stuff. They're going to make way more money. Why? Because they know how to use their money intelligently. It's not enough to do so. Work hard. Here's another thing that I learned now that I've made a bit of money. The knowledge you learn from others who actually have had money is super important. But I didn't know that because I was financially illiterate. The only lesson my mom gave me is save your money, which already a great lesson. And thankfully, it saved me a lot. Then I have to learn about tax-free savings account. I have to learn about dividends. I have to learn about incorporating. I have to learn about the tax brackets. I have to learn about tax brackets for corporations versus individuals. All these little money things that make a huge difference, not only in making more money, but maintaining your job. But guess what? Most people don't grow up in those environments. They don't even know this information exists. That's the thing out there. Dude. When your dad tells you, yo, listen, I know you don't know what you're doing, but you made a lot of money at 18. Let me help you out with your best strategy. I know this shit. I've been there too. Daddy! That's I mean, that's a personal thing. But I'm just talking about from a work standpoint, and after that, they realize that they don't have the support system to yeah. be, even do the work that you didn't were able to do. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's from the personal standpoint, but it does affect your work. Agree. So, agree. So, so when she sits there and she's talking about like, yeah, just work hard and it's that, he seems like that's such a tone deaf thing to say. There's people who are working hard at their jobs every single Abba, agree, agree, agree. <laughs> every time he's challenged by preach, he's always like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Oh my God, how funny. Well, they, and they will never see me upward mobility, either because the financial strain and the responsibilities financial that they have with the multiple kids and all this stuff is so big that they don't have yeah, time to be Kim K was with, able to go to law school. Yeah, but she had nannies. Things that she will never have access to. Yeah. Nannies. Oh my gosh. She, he's right. He's not wrong. Yeah, she has nannies and a whole lot of other support. Probably people that come in there and cook every day like clean every day you know things that you don't have access to but um i don't know that it's beneficial to to say to yourself i will never have this i think continue to strive to have those things and that at the very least is the first step towards actually having those things because you can everyone can have those things it's just the fact is not everyone will and what what's one of the things that makes the biggest difference between the people that do make it and the people that don't well it's the mindset so although agreed in what he's saying there a little bit i would take that with um perspective in mind right now, living paycheck to paycheck? Yo, it's not, 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 so it's not the same thing. So, <laughs> so the little thing is, we're rich people like that. People that are born rich and rich people like that. You know what? I'm going to include myself. People that make a little bit of money, not even rich rich. Mm -hmm. that, the minute you make a little bit of money, mm -hmm. the minute you start to be a little bit disconnected. Oh, I include myself in that. Oh. Yep. And I was having this conversation with one of my friends. And I think he's right. I think... But I, it's, I, I think it's a spectrum. I think that if you came from nothing, yes, you will start getting disconnected, but you will stay closer to, um, I don't want to say reality, but you'll, you'll be able to empathize better and easier than someone who was, for example, born into wealth, right? Um, and and I, again, I think it's a mindset. Even before I started making money, I didn't think my mindset wasn't that of I don't have. Like I would plan and I would get things that I wanted and I'd make sure to get things that I wanted and I wouldn't let 
the, oh, I don't make enough stop me. If that, I don't know how to explain it. Like I literally, if it's like something that's really expensive, I would just like literally plan, okay, three months, six months, and I would get it anyway. So my first, for example, my first car was pretty expensive. And my parents and everyone kept telling me, you need to get something cheaper, small to start out with. And I was young. I was pretty, really, really young. And I was like, no, this is the car that I want. And I got that car and paid it off in a few years. Like, uh, I think it took me like two, three years to pay it off. But it was thousands, was like $60,000 cars. <laughs> it was insane. And I didn't have any credit. So you can only imagine what my interest rate was. So I, didn't, I, didn't, I had no idea what I was doing, but I always had that mindset of, um, this is what I want. So this is what I'm getting. This is what I'm going to get. This is what I'm going to do because this is what I want to do. And I think that's important. That's one of the most important things is not, if not the most important foundation to living the life or the vision that you might want for yourself. And I, yeah, I, I've been, I've been having money for like the past four years now. I'm like, I'm making money, money, and I'm a bit disconnected. And I was like, you're right, you are. I'm disconnected too. People are talking shit about the gas prices, and I was like, Stop that. Oh yeah, the that's true. I like I work from home. I do my own thing. And I don't have to worry about gas. I, like I have to like, I, and I have multiple cars. I buy gas <laughs> once every two months, once every month and a half, or something like that. Because the only time I have to drive is if I'm going to the store or to get my nails done, which I'm doing later on today. But everything is around the corner for me. It's literally less than half a mile from me because that's how I set up my life. I set up my life for ultimate comfort. I, on purpose, from, from when I was younger, actually some of it was luck because I didn't know to think about, oh, I'm going to want to live close to the nail shop or the store. I didn't know to think about those things. I just got really lucky um, when it comes to that. But I, when I did realize, holy crap, the fact that the nail shop is like, uh, I could literally walk to it and it takes two to three minutes at most to get there is insane. Um, an insane benefit that I will never give up, right? So I continued to live that lifestyle and propel that lifestyle by not moving far away, by always making sure that wherever I live, everything is right across the street, basically. So I don't drive anywhere. <laughs> Except if I'm going out somewhere for myself. So I see gas prices and it's insane. And I just, it reminds me of when I did have to drive for years. Because I, I put myself through my master's degree, paid while I was in school. So I didn't, I ended up with no debt. And now even my doctorate, paid for my doctorate while I was doing it. So no debt. Um so I, 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 I feel the pain because all throughout the time when I was doing my master's and my, not my doctorate so much, but at least my master's degree, which was like several years, right? I had to drive back and forth to work, to school. School was like over an hour away. Oh my gosh, I could go on today's, but I know what it means when gas prices are like $5, um, per gallon or whatever the case may be it's insane but there's a certain detachment that's just there because i don't really feel it as much if at all just because i don't have to drive anywhere so even with having multiple cars like i i can't i think the last time i bought gas was over a month ago now right it's even more beneficial because if one car is close to out of gas and I don't feel like refilling, I just use the other one. <laughs> so I know where I, I agree with him when he's saying what he's saying here as well. But it's there. It's outrageous. The cap prices are outrageous out there. It's crazy. When you have a family and shit like that and people are thinking about selling their cars just because they can't, because the gas payment is bi is bigger than the insurance and the car payment, yeah, it is a real problem. 
and that's a problem. And she she hasn't been. I don't know if it's because I'm connected to, and I, I'm always afraid that I'm going to go back to. I always remind myself that I can always go back to where I was. That's why I'm still on jobboom.com. Mm. Every Wednesday I receive some <laughs> some job application. I'm like, oh, I don't want to go back to that, mm. right? But she's never been in that position. Yeah. Right? Never had to be in that position. Mm-hmm. So th- there's a disconnect. There is a disconnect. Yeah. You know? For the rest of the family, too. The younger they are in that family, the bigger the disconnect. Because they really never, they never had that. Jim K was talked about when the other one was young. young. So she's like, oh, yeah, that's life. So, you know, Jenner, the, the Jenner girl. Yeah. Her connections to the Kardashians helped her get the agent, get the photographer, get her all that. You think a, a young aspiring model can do what Jenner did? There's a reason why family was in. Wealth within a family that's prominent, you learn to accept it. You don't have the luxury of work environments. That's a privilege. <laughs> work out efficiently, not not stupid. That's one part. Also, the whole thing about make sure there's no toxic work environments. That's a privilege. When you poor, you take what you can get, and you learn to accept. It. You learn to accept it. You don't have. That's to- true. What when you're that? I had to do that for many years, and it is true. I think going in. Knowing that if you want um, a non-toxic culture, that is going to be something that's a privilege. And most likely that's going to be something that you'll have to build yourself. At least it was for me. But I knew that from a very young age. I knew as soon as I had my first like first one or two jobs, I could clearly see that. It's going to be hard to find a place where I just feel like this is for me. And if I want that, I'm probably just going to have to build it for myself. And I think when you go in with that understanding, then hopefully it serves as more motivation for you. Right. But Abba often says, just accept it. Just accept it. And I don't really I don't really subscribe to that. I don't agree with that. Um, especially if you're not comfortable and you're struggling to pay your bills and things like that. It's not something that you should just accept. Um, it's probably something that mindset wise you should use as further motivation to, um, you know, put yourself in a better positioning societally. This is like, that's privilege talking. Not a toxic work environment. Mm. Who chooses their super? No, I can't do that. I gotta work there because I got mouth to feed. I gotta work. Yeah. There. It's a bullshit job, but I gotta fucking do it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not the best, huh? But <laughs> yeah. imagine looking at fucking soldiers. Uh, no toxic work environment. Yeah, let me go fire my sergeant. What the fuck are you talking about? The fuck are you talking about? Really? <laughs> Love what you do. That's a luxury too. When you. Most Americans, most people in North America, I think it's like 68 percent right now, with paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. Who has the uh, uh, fucking luxury of, of choosing to love what you? That's crazy. I wonder if that's the correct percentage. That's a high percentage of people living paycheck, paycheck to paycheck. But there, I, I agree with them in that it is a luxury. All of these things are luxuries, and these are the things that money can, in fact, buy. Which is why you want to use the knowledge of the fact that these things are not things that are just there. Um, These things are things that you're going to have to either work hard to find or build for yourself because they are luxuries. And if you have, if you have one or both or all of these things, then you're probably in a very, very good position, right? For the most part. So, um, I agree with that, but wow, 68%. I'm going to have to Google that and see if that's accurate, but that's very, very interesting. Even when I was working in corporate, making a good amount, mind you, compared to, you know, others my age, I was still paycheck to paycheck, but I was paycheck to paycheck because I was in school. So all of my money was going to bills. I I lived alone. So all of my money was going to bills or school. That's it. (laughs) Um, You know, but I didn't mind because the one thing I'll always invest in is myself because I know that I can trust myself. So investments in myself are second nature to me. I'll I'll pour money in myself all day long. (laughs) So 
it was fine, but wow, that's super, super interesting. Or no toxic work environment, you live paycheck to paycheck. I think it's like 40% of the people that make more than $100,000 a year so, are living paycheck to paycheck. Because they live in a city where you make that much, but you pay crazy amounts. So, I don't know. To me, it's a bit tone deaf. And I think also a lot of the self help guru bullshit, you just realize that a lot of it's just fluff pieces to tell you, like, oh, you can do it if you do this, this, this. It's a lot more complicated than that. Okay. It's a lot more complicated than that. And honestly, here's something I have to accept with stand up, for example. Some folks are just not going to, they're not cut out for. They don't have the self awareness to realize, like, how their jokes are being interpreted, how their jokes come across to people, what's wrong within their joke. They just don't have the brain for it. Not everyone is meant to do everything. That's why I say you have to understand what your skill sets are and what you can develop and what you don't have. All right? If you got a busted knee, guess what? If your knee's always busted, probably can't do basketball as a professional athlete. It sucks. A lot of NBA athletes have lost their careers. But that's another thing where working hard is not enough. There are certain realities you have to accept. Doesn't mean you can't transition your efforts elsewhere and find where your skill sets matter and they're well valued. But understand that. And also, this is the last thing I think in Tim K's defense. Success can look like a lot of different things. Mm. Maybe it's just a living wage where you're able to take care of your family, put some savings on a trip or two a year. That could be success for a lot of people. Right? It doesn't have to look like a billionaire. Success can vary from person to person. So I think it's encouraging to know like with a certain level of work ethic and thinking intelligently, you can create that environment for yourself in a reasonable sense. But like I, I'm confused sometimes because I feel like everybody thinks they're going to be a millionaire or something like that. And it's like, bro, it's not going to happen. I didn't even think I would get to a point where I'm even close to that kind. I didn't even think that would ever happen. I was going to be fine with just like, yo, listen, let me just make a like, teacher salary to say that I would have been We also have to stop glamorizing this entrepreneurial six, seven figure lifestyle because it's not feasible to most people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ain't that true? This is one thing that I don't agree with Preach and Abba on. I think that um, I think if you're struggling and you're paycheck to paycheck, you don't want to stay there. You don't want to be okay with the mindset of just struggling your whole life, right? Um, I think what it comes down to, I think, I think w what they're saying is because they've experienced that life, and you can hear the experience coming out of the um, their thoughts there. I think it's because they've experienced how hard it is to actually live paycheck to paycheck. And I think uh, that's probably how they coped with having to, uh, to survive uh, in such a difficult, with such difficult uh, restrictions where you don't have as much, you don't have money and you're just trying to like pay that next bill i've been there too so i i i um understand what i don't agree with is not everyone's gonna make it so you should just like be okay with it that's that's insane to me right because you don't have to just be an entrepreneur there's a lot of ways a lot there's a lot of money here in the u.s the u.s prints out a lot of money every second of every day. There's a lot of money, there's enough to go around. You just have to find one, <laughs> something to get you started, you just have to find one. And so I don't agree with, oh, just be okay with being broke because it's already hard enough anyway. Don't agree with that. But I do understand where they're coming from when they're trying to express the, well, I think they're trying to express the sentiment that it's already hard to try to survive day to day, much less trying to worry about adding on to your plate from there, right? But um, that's what I would encourage people to do because that's the only way, especially if you're not born into wealth, that's really the only way to get yourself out of it. You can't just be okay with struggling. <laughs> And they use themselves as an, as an example, but if they were okay with struggling, they wouldn't be here right now. I don't think, I don't even know that they realize that, right? It's like, they wouldn't have continued to make videos. They wouldn't have continued to do YouTube. They would have just stayed at whatever store and they would have just kept doing that. So you can't be okay with uh, being mediocre if that's not what you want for yourself. 
Right. So anyways, good video. Um, these two always crack me up. I really enjoy watching their videos. Um, especially Preach. He's, he's quite the personality, but he's actually quite smart from the videos that I've watched. So, um, Abba, I like, I like Abba too. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So let me know what you guys think. Comment below, subscribe if you haven't helps out the channel a lot and let me know what your thoughts are. Do you, do you agree? Do you disagree? I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.